In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at solving quadratic equations by factoring. Before we get into uh, some examples of actually doing the factoring to solve them, I want to talk about the number of solutions for quadratic equations. And uh, there's three graphs here. Um, when you're solving a quadratic equation, what you're doing is the same thing as find the x-intercepts to the, the corresponding parabola. So here's a parabola here. And when we go to solve this equation, the, the number of solutions is the same as the number of x-intercepts for the parabola. So notice that this parabola crosses the x-axis in two different places. Uh, this one here actually crosses in only one. The vertex just touches there and then it goes back up again. And some parabolas don't actually touch the x-axis at all across the x-axis. So for example, this parabola's vertex is at 4, negative 2, and it opens down. So this parabola never ever crosses the x-axis. So there would be no solution to the equation setting this equal to zero. So now if we look at the coordinates of these uh, points, that's the point one zero, that's the point five zero, and this point here is the point negative one zero. Notice all of those places where the graph crosses or just touches the x-axis. Notice that y is always zero. So, and actually that's always true, any point on the x-axis, y is zero. So that's why these roots to these equations are often called zeros because what we're trying to do is find the x value that makes y zero. So since y is zero in all these, what we do to make an equation for this that we could use to find the x-intercepts is if we put zero in place of y. So it's zero equals x squared minus 6x plus 5 or x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals zero. Okay, you can, you can say either of those. For the uh, next one, again, we would put 0 in place of y, so it looks like this. And, of course, the, uh, the, the form one for this we normally work with is 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals 0. We often put the 0 on the right side. Now, there are no solutions to this one. And uh, to see more of examples like that one, you might look more at a quadratic formula lesson uh, tutorial. Uh, I'm going to do one of those as well. Maybe I'll put the uh, URL in the uh, description for this one. But we would put 0 in place of uh, y here, and then this is what we would be solving. So on the next page, we're going to take a look at solving these two equations. So there's the first one right there. Now, in order to solve this by factoring, uh, this is called a simple trinomial. Simple because there's, a, there's three terms, and it's a 1x squared in the front as opposed to having some number either than, other than 1 here, which we'll take a look at on the, one of the examples in the, in the next page. Now, in order to factor this, we look for two numbers that add to negative 6, have a sum of negative 6, and multiply to 5. And there aren't that many products and numbers that multiply to 5. There's 5 and 1, and also negative 1 and negative 5. And th this is, these are the numbers we want because you see the sum is negative 6. Negative 5 and negative 1 add to negative 6, and they also multiply to 5. So if negative 5 and negative 1 are the two numbers, then x minus 5 and x minus 1, so notice I'm using those two, two numbers in my factors, would be equal to 0. That's, that's the factored form. Um, and you can always check any factored form by... expanding. So for example, if I expand these two binomials together, uh, x times x is x squared. See, x times the negative 1 be a negative 1x, and negative 5 times x is negative 5x, and last but not least, negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. Now I won't bother right with the 0. So let me get my pointer back here. So notice x squared at the beginning, 5 in the end. You see negative 1x and negative 5x adds negative 6x. So that just demonstrates that the factoring is correct. Let's get rid of that writing. Now we have two things, these two binomials. And there's a, there's, you don't see it written there, but there's an understood multiplication between those two binomials. These two things multiply to give a 0. The only thing, the only way you get products of things to equal zero is if at least one of those things has a value of zero. So what we do is we say either x minus 5 equals zero or x minus 1 equals zero. And I'll explain why I've got a little space written here first. Um, so the way we solve x minus 5 equals zero uh, is I want to get, I want to isolate x. I want to get rid of the subtract 5. 
So the opposite of subtracting 5 is to add 5. So I add 5 to both sides. This, a lot of people use the word cancel. Uh, negative 5 and 5 actually add to 0. So this side, the left side, just simplifies to x. And 0 plus 5 is 5. So 5 should be a solution, a root, a 0. A uh, similar idea with this one uh, is x minus 1 equals 0. So the opposite of subtracting 1 would be to add 1 to both sides. So this is gone. We get x equals 1. And if we bring the graph back, see x equals 1, there's the 1 solution. And x equals 5 would be that one right there. So he's going through the x-axis at 5. So that just demonstrates that those should be the correct solutions. Now, if you don't have a graphing utility, what you can do is substitute the numbers back into the equation. So I'm going to put the 1. So it's I'm going to put 1 in here. So it'll be 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus the 5. And you see this should equal 0 because there's 0 on the right side. And it does. So that demonstrates that 1's the solution. Now let's do the 5. Uh, and it's also a solution because it worked out to 0 as well. You see, if you made a mistake, and let's do one more of these. Let's say for some reason you thought that 2 was a solution. I'm going to put 2 in here. So notice it's not working out to equal 0. Okay, so that demonstrates that 2 is not a solution because it doesn't satisfy the equation. Satisfy means that you're, uh, it's a value that makes both sides have the same value. Okay, so uh, second one here. Uh, we're solving 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals 0. So I see a common factor. Um, I can divide all these uh, numbers by 2. So I'm going to do that first. So uh, 2x squared, a lot of people use the word uh, cancel or they divide out. 2 divided by 2 is 1. That's, so there's actually a 1x squared here. 4x divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 0 divided by 2 is, of course, 0. So that's what we have to factor now. Um, so a similar factor into what we did here, we were looking for two numbers that have a sum of 2 and a product of 1. Well, there aren't that many numbers that have a product of 1, uh, whole numbers that is, or integers. Uh, they're either 1 and 1, positive 1 and positive 1, or negative 1 and negative 1. And you see it's positive 1 and positive 1 that also have a sum of 2, so that's the two numbers. So this would factor into x plus 1 times x plus 1, or you see as soon as the two numbers are the same, that means the two factors are the same. So it's actually a, this is a perfect square trinomial. You could just write it's x plus 1 squared equals 1. So there's no need to set two different x plus 1s equal to 0 because they're both the same. So we set x plus 1 equal to 0, and I want to isolate for x. I'm going to get rid of this plus 1. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And so x is negative 1. See, negative 1 plus 1 gives you 0. And so that's my solution. Here's the uh, graph from the previous page. Remember, that was the parabola with the vertex touching at negative 1. So there's my solution right there. On to the last page, two examples here. Now, this isn't a trinomial, it's only a binomial. It's still a quadratic equation because the x is squared. So um, since there's no constant at the end, uh, you can do common factoring to factor these. So ask yourself, well, what divides into 5 and 15 both? And of course, that's 5. Uh, and what divides into x squared and x? So you, uh, you can also factor an x out. So 5x is the common factor. Now, if we divide the 5x squared by 5x, we get just 1x here. And then to find out what goes here, we divide 15x by 5x. Of course, that's 3. So I've I'm finished my factoring. So we set each of these to 0. So let's do the 5x first. And then we'll do the x plus 3 is equal to 0. So here, I would divide out the 5. So the 5s divide out, and we get x equals 0. Uh, so the opposite of adding 3 is to subtract 3, so take away 3 from both sides. Of course, that's gone. So we get negative 3 for a solution. And of course, here's another graph again. So x is 0, so the parabola crosses at 0, 0, 0, the origin, and then also at negative 3. This would be the negative 3 point right here. Okay, last example in D here. Now, uh, this is... Um, um, a similar but a little bit different factoring than we did in the first two examples. The other thing I want to uh, illustrate here is that all these equations, when you're factoring, you want the equation set equal to zero. Well, this isn't set equal to zero. It has this 8 on the right.
So I would want to do some rearranging right away. And what I would do is I would subtract 8 from both sides so that we end up getting a 0 right here. So this would become 3x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So that's the same equation as this one. So uh, we're going to look for two numbers that, uh, and the first part's the same, still adds to the coefficient of the x, so adds to negative 2, sum of negative 2. But the product is the product of 3 and negative 8. It's not just the negative 8. See, if that was a 1 here, 1 times negative 8 would still be negative 8, and you wouldn't have to worry about multiplying the 1. But as soon as that's not a 1 in front of the x squared, you include that in the product. So negative 24 is the product. So we, look, we need two numbers that multiply to negative 24, but also add to negative 2. And there's lots of products of negative 24. Negative 6 and positive 4 are the numbers we need. They do add to negative 2, and they do multiply to negative 24. So that works out, out good. So what we're going to do, and, and this method is often called decomposition. You, um, you decompose or break down the linear term, the negative 2x term, into these two terms. That's what we use these for. So the 3x squared is the same, the minus 8 is the same, the 0 is the same on the other side. But instead of writing negative 2x, I'm going to use these to write it, it in place of the negative 2x, negative 6x plus 4x. See, those two would add to negative 2x. So these are the same equation. They're structured a little bit different now, but they are like algebraically the same. And this becomes factoring by grouping. We get four terms here. So you look at the first two, like just up to here, and ask yourself, well, what divides evenly into both these terms? Three and negative six, well, three factors into them. And they both have uh, powers of x. This is x to the first. This is x squared. So we can factor a 3x out. That's the common factor. And so 3x squared divided by 3x would be just plain old x here. And negative 6x divided by 3x is minus 2. Close the bracket. Now this has a common factor of 4. So we can factor a 4 out here. 4x divided by 4 is x. Negative 8 divided by 4 is minus 2. Okay, equal, close the bracket, equals 0. And x minus 2 is the common factor. Now it's a binomial, but still in common. So we can factor the x minus 2 out. And what's left is 3x plus 4. So these are, this is our factored form now. So we set each of these equal to 0. I'm going to do the x minus 2 first. So I want to get rid of the subtract 2. So we add 2 to both sides. So that's gone there. So we get x equals 2. That's one solution or root. And then the, we set also the 3x plus 4 equal to 0. So I want to get rid of this 4 first. So the opposite of adding 4 is to subtract 4. So that's gone. We get 3x equals negative 4. And I want to get rid of this 3 to isolate for x. So I would divide both sides by 3. So that divides out. And we just get x or 1x here on the, on, on the left equals, and it would be negative 4 thirds. So that is our solution. So 2 and negative 4 are the solutions or roots. And here's my graph again of uh, this parabola. And uh, well, actually, more specifically, it's y equals this parabola here. So here's the 2 right here. And you see this one here, negative 4 thirds is negative 1.3 repeating. Just bring my calculator back here. Negative 4 divided by 3. Yeah, so there's the negative 1.3 repeating. So those are, so 2 and negative 4 thirds would be the solutions, roots. And that is the end of the tutorial.